Hey, how you doing? We're here at JC's Comics and more of your pop culture superstore at 6725 West Central Avenue. That's Toledo, Ohio, 43617 419 531 Processing some more of these comics, going through some of these comics. We've got these Marvel Special Editions with the reprint of the Sergeant Furies. These things are pretty neat. Just seeing the old Jack Kirby and Dick Ayers artwork. And then I ran across issue number 13 here. And looking at this here. I see it's a story that takes place in Holland, and then also this is a rare story. It's uh, Steve Ditko inked Dick Ayers, but uh, one lone boy. But this uh, story takes place in Holland. For my friends in Holland, you might see this as interesting. Uh, they're trying to blow up uh, some of the dikes, and I think my friend Rogers told me about the whole lowlands and how uh, in the uh, the war that uh, that that the Dutch did that to. To uh, mess with the uh, and disrupt the the Germans' plans, but a very interesting issue. They're not they don't tell what uh, what what type of a uh, town they're in. It's just a quiet coastal town, so I don't know if it's supposed to be Rotterdam or, or where it's supposed to be. But one of the hollers is a uh, Dino is a movie star who, of course, is in the in the war, and some Dutch girls recognize him. You know, as Dutch girls would, and there they are. They're running after them. Quick, they have a plan to save the Americans. Now, of course, at the end here, it shows some scenes where they do succeed, and the Dutch boy Hans uh, helps helps them succeed. Uh, to plant the explosives. Yeah, Agent X is helping. And then at the end, it shows that the, the dike has been blown up. But certainly something neat there. Uh, something else. That's the next issue of Marvel, uh, the special Marvel editions. And then bagged up these Master of Kung Fu's. Interesting that you had Gary Conway writing one. You had Steve Englehart. I think Steve Englehart wrote this one. Gary Conway wrote this one. And then Doug Moach took over writing that one there. Then this one also has Rampage and Ron Wilson artwork. That goes back to Paul Glacey. You've got a John Buscema cover. And then I'm going to process the Marvel premieres, which is the first Warlock series. Had his series for a short time with Gil Kane artwork. I've got Roy Thomas uh, writing it. That lasted for two issues, and then it went into his own regular ongoing series. And then Doctor Strange came back for a short period of time. Stan Lee and Barry Smith uh, worked on this here. So Doctor Strange was in, was in this for a short time. Uh, Frank Bruner did the covers, and then Frank Bruner took over the artwork. This is a classic Frank Bruner uh, piece right there. Classic. You've seen that reprinted many, many times. Ten years ago... Stan Lee and Steve Ditko created Doctor Strange, Master of the Mystic Arts. This was July 1973. Uh, actually, it was August of 70, it was August of 62 when Doctor Strange was, was created. Amazing stuff by Frank Bruner. And then you've got the Ancient One. It dies in this issue, number 10. Again, look at the, the Frank Bruner. And then uh, Krusty Bunkers, uh, a.k.a. Neil Adams, did the inks on that. This is classic. Classic work here. I first read this uh, in uh, uh, one of the Marvel Treasure Editions. Had that. I was able to enjoy this story there. You can see the Neil Adams influence there. They killed the Ancient One. And then the ancient one became one with the universe. We got a reprint here. This is Steve Ditko, The Origin of Doctor Strange. Once again, we go back. Doctor Strange. Frank Bruner covers. Again, Krusty Bunkers uh, doing the inks on these. Strange males, anything interesting? Uh, see, no one's name stands out as far as writing in. Talks about the uh, Marvel value stamp. 
And they talk about securing your Marvel value stamp like the family jewels. We know exactly what they mean. Frank Ju uh, Bruner, Dick Giordano, Steve Englehart. And here we've got the Power of Warlock number one. This is a short lived series. You've got this Gil Kane and John Romita. At least John Romita did the face there. Again, Roy Thomas, Tom Sutton, The Day of the Prophet, introducing Counter Earth. Issue number two, got this great red cover that pops. Got the man beast in here, who ended up being one of uh, Adam Warlock's major foes. Uh, art on this was by Mike, uh, was John Basama did the layouts. And Tom Sutton as we finished art. And you got Gil Kane, another Gil Kane cover. Uh, Gil Kane came back and did the art on this one here. Again, looking at the, the letters pages, we're not seeing anyone that's, that jumps out. The Man Called Doom, since it's Counter Earth, they do have the counterparts. Some are not quite the same. Bill Kane artwork. Doctor Doom's not quite as evil in this series uh, and Counter Earth as he was the regular. And then you got Reed Richards who is evil and he becomes the, the brute. Bob Brown artist. Introducing Bob Brown artist. So this might be the first issue with Bob Brown art. You got the great stuff at the bottom here. The Green Goblin's back in Spidey's got him, or is it vice versa? Mighty is the Hulk. That's the Macabre Man thing in every fight filled issue of Fear. Red Wolf now set in the Holocaust of today. Can you dig it? At issue number seven Bob Brown. And this was the last issue of the series until Jim Starlin brought it back. Uh, we've got some issue of a man thing here. Issue number three, John Romita cover. You got Val uh, Merrick and uh, Steve Gerber and Jack Abel. First appearance of Fool Killer. We've got issue number four. This is a Gil Kane cover. We've got the Mike Plug cover on issue number five. And my plug did the artwork as well. So I am going to check this out later before I bag this up. I know this is going to be a masterpiece. My plug certainly could draw the horror stuff. And uh, his he's a, a fantastic storyteller. You've got John Romita cover on this one here. And looks like Mike Plug as well. Again, Steve Gerber. And we got a couple of the bearware, the claws, and the cat, which she ended up uh, becoming Hellcat. Or, or she became Tigra. Uh, Patsy Walker uh, took over and got her costume, and then she became Hellcat. But uh, Greer became, uh, became Tigra. There she fighting uh, the man bull. Jim Starlin, Alan Weiss artwork. Classic art team here, reprint of uh, Marvel Girl from the uh, from the X Men, and then I've got Doctor Strange 176, we got Gene Colan cover uh, before the series was canceled. Tom Palmer inks. Again, look at the. We're not seeing any names in here that uh, that stand out. You can send away for your own monkey for 90 cents or 18.95. But great Gene Cohen artwork. Uh, we're going to have uh, more of these videos. If you like these videos, certainly uh, subscribe. And when you subscribe, be sure to hit the bell for notifications because you want to be notified when. I put more of these videos from this great collection up. Other than that, have yourself a very good afternoon. And remember, uh, be kind to your fellow man because you never know what kind of day that they had. Uh, take care.